Hello and welcome. Today we will be swatching and painting with these amazing Rosa Gallery watercolors. They come in this very uniquely colored tin. I haven't seen one this color before. I did notice, however, that this tin doesn't latch. So I will need to probably latch it with a rubber band or some kind of tie. These were brand new watercolors still in their pans that Kimberly Crick had, and so she sold them to me in what would be a full set. And she did this swatch card already, so I will not have to redo a swatch card. However, I do like to do my own swatching in my etcher sketchbook along with the painting on the other side, so that's what we'll be doing today. There are also these three additional half pans, which I will add to this swatch card before I laminate it. I will open one of these with you so you can see what that is like, and then we will just skip the rest. Pill that up. It does try to <laughs> come off and rip. As usual, I never have very good luck with these. Okay, this is going to take a while. <laughs> there are a lot of watercolors in here, but that is beautiful. Pristine. All right, I will tell you what all these colors are as I swatch them. They're unwrapped and looking beautiful. I added the half pans here, here, and here. One thing I like to do on these big palettes is take out this extra mixing space. There's plenty of room in the lid to mix, so just grab some pliers. Usually you can just grab some pliers. I'm right-handed, so I'm flipping this around. Pull out that pin, and off comes that extra mixing space. So you're just left with this. It's much easier to deal with. And I'm kind of curious if it closes now. It does not, but what if we push these tabs out a bit? Yes, closes on one side now. This side still doesn't close, but we got one side to close. I could maybe continue working on that if I was interested. Okay, let's swatch. Let's see how one re-wets. This is the Cadmium Lemon. Oh wow, that was very fast, very easy. Okay. Didn't even have to try with that one. First up is the Cadmium Lemon. This is a very cool yellow, and it says it is semi-transparent, or do you read that as semi-opaque? I looked up lots of resources and I couldn't figure that one out, but I used this later in my painting and it seems to be quite opaque. Some salt light fast rating of three stars on that one. And the pigment is PY35. Next we have the Cadmium Yellow Light, slightly warmer yellow, very nice, still a PY35. 3 star light fast rating, which is their highest rating by the way. Another semi, I'm going to go with semi opaque on that symbol. Simply because I did find the yellows to be somewhat opaque. Next is Cadmium Yellow Deep Beautiful Golden Yellow, PY35, PO20. It's opaque and 3 star light fast. That one's a very pretty color. That one will be followed up by the Cadmium Orange, which is PO20 and PY35. Again, three star light fast. And this label says that it's opaque. I did use this in my painting that you'll see later in this video, and it's quite pretty, although I do follow that up with the cadmium red light, which you're going to see next here, which is PR108 and the PO20 again. And three star light fast reading. They say this one is opaque. I do find cadmiums to be fairly opaque in my experience anyway when you're using them thickly, so that seems accurate. This is Matter Red, such a beautiful red. Oh my goodness, PR177, so it could be slightly suspect. PR264, it is transparent with three star light fast rating, but it is so pretty. I will be doing my own light fast testing on these. This one is Carmine, PR170 colon one, three star light fast rating, and that one has transparent rating. Another beautiful rose color, just love that. I don't know much about PR170 colon one, but I will go look at Kimberly's website and see what she has to say about it. The one I'm trying to work on over there is the Magenta Rose PR122. That is a very special, beautiful color. You'll see it swatched later because I do mess up with the water and touching that other one, but it's pretty unique and I will link Kimberly's website where she talks about all of these colors, particularly that one. This one is the Quinn Lilac PV19, and it is another really beautiful color. It's just pretty spectacular. It's like a mix between a rose and a purple, and I love it. Now this one coming up, oh my goodness, look at the flow. Now they are claiming there's no oxgall or aquasol like core in these paints, that it's just so finely ground that they spread like this. So I find that very interesting. 
but very beautiful PV23 violet there. Next, olive green, three pigments, PG17, PY1, and PBK7 with only two star light fast rating, and it is semi-opaque, and it's kind of a neat color. I don't ever mind having olive greens on my palette. This green I really, really like. To me, it feels like a mixture of hooker's green and a sap green in, in the hue. However, it is a single pigment color, PG8, and it has a moderate light fast rating, so just two out of three stars, and it is transparent. And this emerald green is PG7, and it is fully transparent with three star light fast rating, and when you get that second layer on it, it really shines. You can see exactly what hue that is once that comes out. It's kind of neat. It's showing a little greener on this green than it actually is. It's very much a viridian type or thalo green type of color. Cobalt blue. This one is a little bit harder to get the color payout as is usual. PB28, three stars, semi-opaque, and a little bit of water sitting on that one, even for 30 seconds or less will help that one come out. And so I have water on it and I bring my brush over and get more pigment and then I just dab it because if you keep pulling your brush through this, it doesn't lay down the pigment, but by dabbing it, it does. This blue is beautiful. It's a PB15. It's just a gorgeous color and three star fa light fast rating, transparent. Making a mess over there. I'm at the end of this sketchbook so that middle fold is kind of folding towards the binding, of course. So making it a little bit challenging in that area. Next we have regular old ultramarine. Very much like this one. This is very finely ground so you don't see a lot of granulation in this one but it does react with salt. So I think their super finely ground pigments are one thing that makes these very special watercolors. Three star light fast rating semi-opaque. Cobalt turquoise PB28. I always love this color. It's hard to get a good color payout with it it takes some effort, so putting water in that one ahead of time as well and massaging your brush into it will really help. But once you get that color, oh, just gorgeous for lake scenes and whatnot. Indigo, look at the flow on that one. I'll give you a minute to appreciate it. <laughs> the indigo and the violet both give you a really good color payout. Like You barely need any on your brush and it's going to be thick and dark and beautiful and wonderful. Anyway, that's a multi-pigment color, PB15 colon 1, PV19, PBK7, and it is two star light fast rating and semi-opaque and beautiful. I love it. It's very nice indigo. Yellow ochre, one of my least favorite colors in watercolor, PY43, PY42, three star light fast rating and semi-opaque. This one's not too bad though for a yellow ochre. I didn't use it in my painting that you'll see later, but I do have an appreciation for it occasionally when I'm doing landscapes. Umber, PBR7, three star light fast rating and semi-opaque. I had trouble getting some of the color out on that one too, but I was using these dry. I wasn't pre-wetting them at all, so not too bad. And then you can see when I just go back with my brush after the water got on it the first time, just fine. Burnt Sienna. I always find Burnt Sienna a very interesting one. It's usually a PR 101, three star light fast rating on this one, transparent, but you can't get a high payout on this one when the paint is wet. So in order to get that mask tone, you do need to let the bottom layers dry. I know you can't see what I'm feeling on the screen there, but I'm bringing the brush over it and when I try and thicken it, it just doesn't do that. So do have to let it dry. And I noticed that with a lot of Burnt Siennas, not all PR 101s, no just ones that call themselves burnt sienna. English red is the one there. It's another PR 101. You can see it's completely different. Color payout is completely different also. So the layering on that one while wet is not a problem so much. Three star light, fast rating and opaque. Moving on to the sepia. I was curious if that was going to flow. Has PBR7, PBK7 and PR177. Three star light, fast rating, semi opaque. And I really like it. It's a beautiful sepia. I Used it a lot in my painting that you'll see later in this video. I keep saying that. <laughs> Next we have Neutral Black, PB15 colon 1, PBK7, and the PR177. So this and the sepia both have that PR177 in it, so they might be subject to some fading. Even though they say 3-star light fast rating in their gradient, they'll probably fade. So we'll find out when I do my light fast test. Now we can go back to that 
beautiful magenta rose PR122, and I wish my studio light wasn't glaring on it for you. Kimberly is right. This color is magnificent. I would be proud to have it in any of my watercolor palettes and would like to find it single pan. I went ahead and put the mass tone stripe on like I did with the last video, the Schmincke paints. There is no shininess on these. Not that I can tell anyways. So I'm curious why the Schmincke paints have shiny edges and this does not appear to. I need to do some research on that. One of you in the comments in the last video suggested it was the sizing on the paper. So perhaps different paints just react differently with paper sizing than others. All right, I have this taped off and we are going to do a little painting. And I'm starting out by watering the entire page with my big hockey brush. And that one works really well if you have big spaces to put water down. And I'm starting with the lightest yellow, that cadmium lemon. And as I mentioned before, it's a very beautiful bright yellow, very cool. And I'm bringing some of that into the sky as well so I can get some very light areas there. And that is the next yellow, cadmium yellow light. And I might have mixed that with a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep. And I apologize, I did not know that my camera was having some trouble focusing. It's usually why I keep my hand over the paper when I'm doing these, you'll see my hand in the middle of the paper so that the camera has something to focus on. But since the whole paper was wet, it wasn't really a great place to rest my hand. So we have some camera focusing issues going on there. And I'm keeping some of this in real time for you and some of it sped up. But here is a mixture of indigo with, uh, I think a little bit of PV19 Nope, the violet, the PV23, and eventually I do put a little of sepia and the neutral black into this mixture, but that one's mostly the indigo on its own. So you can see when it gets light, it definitely does show a blue tint coming through. So it's very pretty. I'm just letting that flow into this water area. I know you can't tell that's water right now, but it's water and bringing in some of the darker reds, some of the darker colors. The focusing thing does go away here very quickly. It likes to have that dark purple bush thing I just put in to focus on, so I think that pretty well fixes it. Bringing in some shadow under there, and this is the fun part where you put in the deep darks back there and that's where I did mix the indigo, the violet, and the sepia together. So that's those three colors. I held my ruler across there just to get a general idea of what a straight line would be when I do that horizon line. It's fun to put those silhouette trees in. It's just really neat. Kind of like, oh yeah, now I can see where the painting is going. So I already mentioned how these paints flow and supposedly it's not the Aquazol or Oxgall or anything like that, it's the finely ground pigment. So I know I've said that before, I just want to make sure you heard, because <laughs> look at that. It's insanely awesome. And I looked at their website and everything, and they say it's just 100% organic gum Arabic as their binder. So it's, it's interesting. Can super finely ground pigments make that happen? Apparently. Look how deep that violet can get, wow. And I decided to just try and let most of the flow happen and not clean up too much of it. So it will look more like a rainstorm possibly happening here and I really like that. However, the etcher paper you can see right in the middle is definitely a dip there. So the paper buckles and we have a big valley and I do wanna clean some of that up because obviously some of that blue that I had went down into the yellow and I don't really want a lot of green in my sky. I did put a little bit of cobalt blue in there and now I'm just doing that same dark mixture of the indigo, violet, and sepia. I think eventually I do add a little bit of the neutral black for some of these dark areas in the clouds. I had a very wet brush up there and it created some fun effects up on the right cloud area. I have to tell you that was one of the most pleasant painting experiences I have ever had. These watercolors are spectacular. They are on par with the feel of core. That's my impression of them. And you can see that I redid the swatch sheet and added those half pan colors there. And then I cut the top strip off and scooched it over and laminated it. So it fits in there <laughs> nicely. It's all set. 
there's not really much more to say. If you are not new, then you know my love for core watercolors, and these give me the same feel. So it'll be so fun using these some more and see what I think of them as I keep painting. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. What are you puppies doing? What are you puppies doing? Like 13 Yeah. And then it jumped up. I don't know. We'll get it out of the mailbox helps, and I think getting it up that high helps. What are you doing? Hi. Hi.